I'm Phil Picardi, the Chief Content Officer of Teen Vogue and Them. And I came to Istanbul with W Hotels to explore all that Istanbul has to offer and the queer people who make this city so colorful. Um, so we've been in Istanbul now for two days. Mm -hmm. What? How? Sistanbul, as you've been calling it. Sistanbul. How has it lived up to your expectations? It's so interesting because at, we were talking about how nervous we were about this trip for so many reasons. Obviously, you read about Turkey in the newspapers, you read about Istanbul, and it was a little bit anxiety-inducing to come here, for sure, especially as a visibly gay person. And we were warned, like, by multiple people. Yes, yes, we were. But I was, so I was actually really surprised at how hospitable Istanbul was, how like absolutely charming the people and the, the culture is and how welcoming everything felt. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good, good to meet you. What um, is your work kind of specifically focusing on? Because I've seen a whole host of things. I've seen a photo series you did called Sex UG. I saw that you were doing a whole photo series just in general on LGBTQ refugees. I'm a photojournalist covering news, feature stories and things, but in my personal work, I mostly cover LGBT issues surrounding LGBT migration. Mm -hmm. um, mostly people from the Middle East that have fled their countries and transit through Turkey often because of their gender identity or sexuality. Uh, so Istanbul became this hub of the community from all over the region, all sort of Arab countries, the Gulf, um, from even further afield is Yemen and, right. and Libya. So I've documented the struggles that they've had in the unknown period of waiting before they get asylum in a third country, maybe North America, maybe Europe. Yeah. Why are we meeting here? This is a lovely little park. Yeah, it's a very small park, but it's quite significant in the story of LGBT Istanbul of recent times. Um, so when I first moved to Istanbul six and a half years ago, it was a kind of, I only knew this park as a cruising park. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a late night sort okay. of hangout place of gay men. Hangout. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then in 2013 with the Gezi protest movement, it started off about trees in, Istanbul, in, in this park, but um, later involved different, different groups from all over society, particularly the LGBT movement. And then it sort of, the LGBT, the LGBT movement then gained more respect and momentum from all the other opposition movements wow. in Turkey. Yeah, and a sort of social, social uprising. How have things changed <clears throat> since then? In terms of the LGBT movement, since 2013, the Pride has been banned for three consecutive years, 2015, 16, and 17. Wow. So things have kind of gone downhill for the LGBT movement so far. Why do you think it's important to you to stay here? To document what's happening with the community, how it's changing, from the migrant communities living here and also from the Turkish perspective of what's happening with the Turkish LGBT movement. You've obviously photographed people from all over the world and you've been documenting what the queer community looks like from various regions uh, in, this part of, in this part of the world in particular. What makes the queer community in Istanbul so special? There's a non, or never ending prevalence, I guess, and, and optimism. I mean, they've, been, they've taken a lot of different threats and attacks and sort of demoralizing things, but in the end they, sort of, you know, they keep their head up and keep going. That's, that's what I admire about it. There's this overwhelming sense of not only everybody knowing each other, but all coming together and celebrating these moments. Totally, and Ozun is the perfect example of that, right? Like she's this, a trans woman who owns a bar and is a business owner, is living this incredible life that she's proud of. She just kind of says, I don't have to fear anything because I'm doing what is right, you know? You could tell that she was this like really incredible mother figure. And I loved bearing witness to that because I thought that was beautiful. How long have you owned this space for? Do you ever get afraid that the government doesn't want spaces like this to exist from the community. Aslında çok fazla korkum yok. Yani korku üzerinden hiçbir şey inşa etmiyoruz zaten. Uh, o yüzden uh, böyle bir korkum olduğunu söyleyemem. Burası nice. herkese açık bir yer çünkü. What is your hope uh, for the future of the queer community living in Istanbul? Çok umutluyum ben. <gülüyor> çünkü um, her şeyden önce temas etmemiz gerekiyor. Birbirimize temas etmemiz gerekiyor. Bu temas hep olacak çünkü hayatın içinde var bu. O yüzden de bu umut hep olacak. Bugün temas ettik mesela. Hello. Hi Felipe. How are you? How are you? Good. Welcome. How's it going? Good. How are you? You're getting ready to DJ tonight, I hear. 
I'm never ready, but I'll try something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always nervous before the DJing, but it's okay. What are some of the hurdles that trans people face for equality oh, here? No. Um, obstacles, challenges? I believe that the trans people struggle starts when they're born. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so it starts in the family, in the schools, in the uh, la la labor, no, mm -hmm. um, uh, work, um, work, yeah. exactly. Uh, so, so it's like chain reaction. Relatively, things are changed, starts to change uh, here. Even the families are changed, new generation families are changed. So, I believe, yeah. You're mm -hmm. confident that. Yeah, of course. The, one of the beautiful thing in this country is the food, first. Then the queer community, I mean. Okay, I, I, food and community. Of course. <laughs> I trust them very much. <laughs> you trust the food and you trust the people. <laughs> exactly. Well, Pride was born of resistance, so we are so proud that you guys continue to resist. Cool, thank you. Thank you for chatting, I really appreciate it. Thank you, I like it too. Liberté, égalité, Beyoncé. For centuries, we've had to figure out how to celebrate ourselves and each other and our love in closed spaces and kind of underground ways. But that doesn't make our pride any weaker. It actually makes us stronger. And I felt that to such a beautiful degree last night at Uzumbar. Because I can't remember a time where I was surrounded by so many young, queer people. That all knew each other. All knew each other and all loved each other. Mm -hmm. And were there to make each other feel safe. And we're looking out for one another. That was also fascinating and all of those motifs about repressed sexuality and coming from a predominantly um, Muslim country and, uh, and being in the Middle East, you know, I've, I've often wondered what it's like to live uh, queer and, and love queer here. Um, and, and so it was interesting to see those kind of themes reflected. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> no, nothing. And you brought your art for us, I see. Yes. It's already out. Why don't you tell us about kind of how you initially got involved with the Pride Committee and what kinds of things you were doing with them? I love being into anarcho queer collectives, so yeah. that's why I've only participated in the exhibitions uh, which were organized by Pride's committee or such groups like that. Can you tell me what it is you do here in Istanbul? I'm here as an art critic. I'm working as an art critic. Yes, and I read um, that you specialize specifically in queer art, is that right? Yes, of course. I focus on queer art and young artists and con uh, conceptual art. And is there a very vibrant queer art scene then here in Istanbul? I'm not sure if you can say it's a vibrant, but uh, there is a visibility of queer artists and queer art. Okay. And I think that's a uh, unique uh, thing for the Istanbul queer art scene because uh, we are not from Europe or we are not from East. Right. But uh, we have a queer art in here and we have a queer moment in here. How do you think that reflects in your art? What are you focused on right now? Well... Um, I see lots of snakes. I think they're all about like desires and pleasures and at the same time it's about uh, the experience of pressure and limitation on my sexuality and body which is not only personal but also commonly shared among women and queers. Mm -hmm. uh, here in the moment we are mostly consist of feminists. Yeah, I mean we cannot think LGBT plus movement without feminism here. It's totally you know, in groups grow together, mm -hmm. so um, at the same time in the feminist movement there are a lot of LGBT plus people here. Mm -hmm. we, we don't have that kind of separation really. We can say that there's a pressure on LGBT groups, uh, LGBT organizations, uh, but the pressure is not just for us. Pressure is for all the mi minority groups. Mm -hmm. But Turkey and the Ottoman Empire has a long history about uh, queers. The movement is a new thing, maybe, for Turkey, mm -hmm. but we have a queer history. I can see that you too are expressing yourself in a really beautiful and interesting way. And I'm sure that for a young person who gets to see your art, that really makes a difference. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Do you see a 
diamond ring. <laughs> and how was getting your fortune read? It was so cool to be able to celebrate um, something that's a regular Turkish tradition here that's tied into mysticism and spirituality. I think the biggest thing I would say is that it's important for queer people to visit Istanbul. Part of us exercising our privilege as queer Americans is being visible for the people who can't be, right? And so I often think of what a bunch of like kids down, like walking down the street or men in the park thought when they were seeing all of us walk by and it was this big posse of gay men. And I think that might have been really powerful and you never know, you know, what visibility can mean to someone and how visibility can save a life. Um, and so I'm glad that we were here and I think it is an important use of privilege to go places where queer people are afraid and show them that there's possibility for life, success and, and love, um, even if it doesn't feel like it in the current moment. In a way, I feel like pride is stronger here in so many, in so many ways than it can feel sometimes in New York where pride is so mainstream. It was really beautiful to see that pride is, is really not a privilege, which I thought it was coming here. Pride is actually a basic human right that nobody can take away from us. And I think the queer people who we met in Istanbul really show us in a really powerful way.